Now, most people won't even listen to this video because there ain't no fancy jumping around. There ain't no fancy graphics. There's nothing like this. Brian is a doctor. You are more than happy to look him up on Facebook. He has heavy education when it comes to diseases. Now, he's made a post that probably should be in every newspaper across the USA. And, of course, you're going to have your naysayers saying the numbers are false. Oh, my God. Whatever. You people want to believe what you want. But the bottom line is people are dropping like flies. And when they say we're going into a black winter, they're not using those words, those words mildly. Now, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to read this. Hope I don't botch it up too bad. But um, if you want, you can pause it and read it. And uh, this is what's coming down the pipe. Driving by the mall yesterday, seeing the parking lot packed, was terrifying. Watching millions of people travel over the past week has pissed me off. We are nearly a year into the pandemic, and half the country has looked at 300,000 deaths and said, meh. I'm not sure how to get people to take it seriously, but I'm going to keep trying. So here are some tough realities about the COVID. Tough reality, people still don't have a realistic idea of the severity of this disease. There is one group of people who are completely terrified of this virus, expecting it to infect everyone and kill most of all the people who get infected. They are still wiping down groceries with bleach and showering every time they step back inside after getting the mail. Their risk gauge goes from 0 to 100 and everything sits at 100. Living like this is destroying, the, living like this is destroying their mental health. There's another group of people at the extreme opposite end of the spectrum basically writing it off as a hoax. They have zero concern for it and are not doing a damn thing to stop it. They think it's a scam and make it a point of completely contradicting all public health advice. They are endangering us all with their ignorance and selfishness. The truth is that your level of concern for COVID should fall somewhere between these two extremes. Most people who get the disease do not need hospitalization and most people don't die. That doesn't mean that it's just a simple cold. People still do die. 300,000 so far, it's the third leading cause of death this year behind heart disease and cancer. Take it seriously as those diseases. I'm going to go down here. I am not terrified of it, but I'm not discounting, discounting it either. I have a healthy respect for this virus and I'm taking steps to protect myself. However, I do not live in a bubble and I prioritize the things that will reduce the risk the most. I go to the grocery store, but way less often than I used to. And I do so at 930 on a Tuesday night when it's empty. I have not dined in a restaurant since February, but I will get takeout. I wash my hands when I get home, but I don't immediately wash my clothes. I focus on the greatest risks, mitigate those, and if it isn't a risk, I don't worry about it. Tough reality. It is not going away anytime soon. The approval of the vaccine for the COVID signal signals the beginning of the end, not the end itself. We have to be realistic about the timeline. And I'll just put this out there right now so you can start yelling at me. Spring break is dead. Memorial Day will still be dangerous. Graduations will be canceled and in-person high school and college classes should not happen until next fall. Yes, the fall of 2021 is the earliest we will start getting back to normal. So why will it take that long? Well, you can't stop a pandemic overnight, even with a vaccine. First, the vaccine has not been approved. The FDA will be meeting in two weeks to review all the information. The members need time to prepare for that meeting. So you need to give them a little time. And then there will be a little time 
before an official decision is made. The vaccines submitted for approval require two doses a month apart and then a little time for the immune system to respond. For simplicity, let's say that they approve it and to start the new year. If we vaccinate everyone on New Year's Day, we, we still wouldn't be protected until mid-February. But that isn't realistic either. It is going to take months to roll out a program to vaccinate hundreds of millions of people. It takes us a few months to vaccinate half the population for influenza. influenza. And that is what a system that's been tried and tested. This will be a massive public health effort, the likes of which we have not seen in our lifetimes. It takes time to manufacture it, distribute it, and deliver it. We will get there, but we can't do it in a weekend. Healthcare workers who treat COVID patients will be the first in line. Last in line will be anyone who shared that garbage pandemic documentary on social media and told me to do my research. To protect our population, we are going to need to vaccinate about two thirds of the population. We know what a lot of people are not going to want to get the vaccination and will take a lot of effort to get to that level. Until we do, we will not be able to control the outbreak. I also expect that people will stop following public health guidance because of a vaccine that exists, even if they have not been vaccinated themselves. That two-thirds level is for the population as a whole, and there will be pockets of people who much lower levels. So we will continue to see transmission and outbreaks flaring up all over the country. That means that we are going to continue to have to wear masks and social distance for quite a while. The tough reality, we cannot test our way out of this. Testing alone is not sufficient to stop the disease transmission. The problem is, is that the PCR test gives false positive negatives 20 to 30 percent of the time. The promise of rapid testing is full of false hope as well as it has a slightly higher false negative rate coupled with something we don't get with the PCR tests, false positives. I dread the day I have to use the predictive value calculations to explain to people why that rapid posit positive they got is meaningless. And on the side note, HR people and business owners don't know a damn thing about testing. I am so sick of these people requiring a meaningless negative test to return to work. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Stop it. Stop clogging up the testing programs with your meaningless ass covering bullshit. Following the CDS rules, you can't test your way out of quarantine. The White House tried a testing only strategy and it didn't work. If the most advanced testing could not stop the most heavily protected person in the world, from being infected, it isn't going to work anywhere else. The toughest reality, this is all our fault. Disease spread is simple and reflection of our behavior. More travel, large groups, more unnecessary shopping trips, dining in restaurants, all these things led people to spending time in close contact. People were up in their arms about being told to be safe during Halloween. People are going to lose their minds when we launch our don't give grandma COVID for Christmas messaging. Numbers are going to look a little better for a few days, but that's an illusion. That will be due to the health department and testing centers closing for Thanksgiving. And two to three weeks from now, we will see effects of the holiday travel and large family gatherings for Thanksgiving. So because they all took off vacation, nothing was going on. The numbers are increasing nationwide and have been for the past couple months. You know what's next. Hospitalizations, as more people get admitted each day, can be discharged. We are having to discuss our crisis standards of care. 
If there isn't enough capacity to treat everyone, we have to enact rules about who gets treated and who is just made comfortable to wait the inevitable. In deaths come next, whether we like it or not. So this doctor says, we're going to quadruple in so many people going to the hospital, they're going to have to pick and choose who dies. That's what's coming. So what do we do? You know everything that the public health has been saying for the past year. Do that. Don't just agree with me on here with posting pictures every day of you out at a restaurant with another group. Cancel your office Christmas party. Plan to stay home for New Year's Eve. Shop online. Get takeout rather than dining in. Think about how you're going to infect. Infected puts your family at risk. Think about how you get infected puts your family at risk. Make up. Back up. Wash up. And if you want to say that that's a hoax, shut up. So... This doctor is telling everybody that um, the worst is coming. And nobody's saying anything. So who is he? Look him up on Facebook. Knock yourself out. He's an infectious disease epidemiologist. Did I say that right? And he's a doctor. He has studied infectious diseases at UC Berkeley. You think he might know what he's talking about? Everybody's acting like this vaccine's a cure. It's not a cure. You have to allow your body two, three months for it to finally kick in. And like he said, all you morons that don't believe masks are supposed to be worn, or you want to be in groups, or you want to party, Heck, my schools here are still playing basketball and football. They act like it doesn't exist, and yet my county's number one in Tennessee. And they keep ignoring it. I hear people say, well, I'm not old, so I'm not going to die. Well, go ahead. Go play the odds. Knock yourself out. This is not the flu. And because of so many stupid damn people, they're spreading it like crazy and they're putting everyone's life at risk and they say well don't try to control my life nobody knows how to wear a mask properly nobody knows how to wash their masks nobody knows anything about what they're doing and this has been going on for almost a year now you might as well walk down the street and just shake your head because you're surrounded by morons and I really don't care how many people I offend with this video we're looking at another year, if you really want to know the truth. This ain't vaccine going to save the world. And to inject so many people, like this doctor said, you're looking at a ridiculous amount of time that this is going to take. It's not going to happen overnight. And you've got people that don't even want to take the needle. They want to sit back and wait and watch. How long are you going to wait? Six months, a year? Do you see their hair fall out? We don't know if five, six, ten years from now, if it even gives people cancer. I haven't seen any of the tests, have you? This ain't off social media. This is strictly from a doctor that has extremely high education with this. I tend to believe this more than I do a bunch of morons that don't even have a certificate. If you actually watch this whole thing to the end, hopefully you stay alive this year. Catch you guys on the next one.